your mother Nutan Ji was awarded six film fairs. Did you feel any pressure to live up to her expectations when you chose acting? You know, professional pressure wasn't there, uh, but there was a lot of uh, pressure in terms of living up to her image and her uh, position in society, and the way she carried herself. Uh, you know, those sort of things were the the quantum of pressure that was there in terms of not behaving in a manner which could be construed as you see as far as the profession was concerned acting is the the, the comparison is much less because she was a leading lady and i was a male actor so direct comparison my daughter's facing that comparison now <laughs> yeah your favorite film and song of Nutanji. Can you sing a line? <coughs> Can I sing? <clears throat> Not a good idea. Not a good idea. So no, let me avoid the singing part of things. But uh, it's very difficult, you know, to uh, quantify one single film as my favorite film of my mother's. So allow me to give you a few names. Some which were obviously very well known which were the standard lot, let's call him that, the Seema, Sujata, Bandini, Maitulsi, Tere Angan Ki. And then there were a few like Saudagar, which were appreciated, but uh, not as much as these others were. Um, Teri Mang Sitaro Sibharati, which I thought was phenomenal. So yeah, uh, as far as songs are concerned, I think Savan Ka Mahina works big time. All those songs are very nice, even the ones in Paying Guest. But Savan Ka Mahina works. Yeah. As a child, you wanted to become a pilot. What made you choose acting? Yeah, I stumbled upon acting, actually. I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to join the Indian Air Force, etc., etc., etc. And uh, I used to accompany my mother on her film sets. And uh, one of the sets that I did accompany her on was... Uh, when I was much younger, I was well, difficult to remember now, but I think, I think around uh, 16, 15, 17, Kiaspas. Um, and then a few years later, I once again, this was Raj Khosla Sahib's set. And a few years later, I, uh, when I was in college, I once again accompanied her to the sets of Tirimang Sitaro Zabharu, which was again being produced and directed by Mr. Raj Khosla. And he made the offer to my mother saying that uh, would Monish, Timmy, as they call me, would he be interested in joining films? You know, So I asked my mother, I said, she asked me, and I said, well, what do I have to do? I mean, I was in college. So of course, I didn't speak in Hindi at that time because I was a South Bombay educated, English speaking individual. So she said, you'll have to go and learn Urdu first. You know, I said, okay. Uh, I went along to Raj Khosla Sahib's office to learn Urdu, where I learned how to read and write Urdu and you know, went through the whole thing. And I got interested in this culture, which was uh, actually the introduction to cinema, the language, the Urdu language. Interestingly, what happened uh, was that because, uh, you know, there was this influx of quote-unquote uh, star sons at that time, Sanju and uh, Bunty, and, uh, Kunal, Sunny, all, all, all of them. And the buzz kind of went around that Nutanji's son is also, uh, you know, training at Raj Khosla's office. Halaki koi film tani with you at Uswa. You know, it, was, it wasn't decided that I was being launched by Raj Khosla or anything like that. It was a decision to just kind of start grooming him without any specific film in mind. More to see whether Monish is leaning towards cinema and whether he's capable of. So, uh, because word got around, a couple of offers started coming. And uh, Raji told my mother, he says, you know, Monish ke liye tick-tock offers are hain, A-grade offers hain, South ki films hain, Hindi language mein. Uh, Sanju ki second film release hogi. Sanju is a top star after Rocky and it's a parallel lead. Mujhe lagta hai Monish ko introduction le lena chiz. So, that's how I stumbled upon it. That's what happened. Uh, I was still in college, you know. And then, then one thing led to another. I did six films out of which five flopped. <laughs> one was a, a, a horror film, Purana Mandir, which was a stupendous success. But in those days, uh, horror films weren't considered A 
B grade. I mean, they were considered C grade films. And a hero of a horror film didn't get much work except in that same genre. So I kind of sat at home for two and a half, three years. In this period of time, I decided to pursue my acting career, uh, my uh, flying uh, as a profession. So I started doing my flying and got my licenses in place and all that sort of thing. And then again, just to cut the sh- uh, long story short, I stumbled uh, into the break of Mene Piarkia, which came through Salman, which is kind of a pretty known story by now, I guess, because I've been asked it many times, where he was struggling himself. And uh, he told me that there's a role going and why don't you go and audition for it? So I said, okay, go and do it. By then, by the time, by, I had learned Urdu by then. <laughs> you know? So yeah, so I went and auditioned for it and that famous dialogue, which became pretty viral, if you could call anything that in those days. Was that Iglarka Larki Kabi Dosni or Sakte? That one uh, is what Suruji auditioned me on, and uh, the film was made, it was a hit, and uh, then after that, it was continuous work. So, yeah, that is the, the way I kind of stumbled twice over into the film industry. Can you narrate a few struggles you faced to get your first film, Teri Bahu? You know, uh, as I told you, the initial stages when I was uh, learning Urdu, reading, writing, speaking, etc., Urdu at Raji's office, there was no struggle because there was no intention to bag my first film as a launch. I didn't have those uh, uh, desires or motivations. I was simply going there to learn a language and to kind of check out the scene, so to speak, having free time off college. And once I'd finished my college, I would probably go in for flying, etc. So no, I didn't. I didn't have to struggle in those first uh, five, six films. I mean, once the word got around that Nutanji son was in the industry and has got a couple of films, the offers started coming. Then they dried up once the film started releasing and they started flopping. Uh, commercial success is everything as far as uh, you know the leading category is concerned. So they, they dried up. So I had no struggle, so to speak, in terms of uh, getting that first film or that second film or the first five, six films. The struggle actually started in that two and a half up, uh, two and a half year period, post the sixth release, when I couldn't understand that Purana Mandir was a silver jubilee, it was a super hit, and I wasn't getting work. And when I had to, uh, you know, resign myself to the fact that nothing is working, and it didn't make sense to me because here was a commercial success and still nothing was working. So I figured that that was the struggle days. You know what happened was. You lose confidence in yourself. You kind of tend to... Um, I'll give you an example. You kind of get get a bit uh, OCD, you know, like obsessive compulsive disorderly. You tend to go there. What happens is you, you have a... Uh, let's say you've, you've bagged a meeting with somebody and you have to go for it. Uh, you open your wardrobe and you say, I'll wear this shirt. And then you look at it and you say, no, but last time nothing happened. And you go through your whole ro- wardrobe and all the shirts are quote-unquote, contaminated because nothing worked, you know. So you kind of get that uh, whole negative uh, aura about uh, your own capabilities and things like that. Uh, You start questioning yourself in terms of your capacity as a human being. And, you know, you're you're just 22 years old, 23 years old. Uh, And you need to make a career. And uh, you cannot live off your wealthy parents all your life. Or so you believe because my, my parents were very particular about, you know, me standing on my own two feet, whatever it might be. So yeah, that was the struggle period. An actor who inspired you? I guess my mother. Uh, not just as an actor, but as a, as a human being more than anything else. My mother. She was extremely, uh, extremely calm in her mind. Um, she introduced me to the the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, and I used to argue with her about the teachings in the Gita until I realized that she used to follow them and not follow them physically, but follow them emotionally and mentally. And that was uh, that was remarkable because even when she, uh, in her final days, when the last two, three years, when she had uh, was uh, diagnosed with uh, carcinoma, she had this thing that where she said that, you know, after all, there must be a reason behind this also. You know, this almost existentialist attitude which the Gita uh, proclaims and puts out you, is that accept what your uh, destiny is, do your karma. 
So yeah, I would say that my mother. Every industry is full of competition. What do you do to stand out? You know, first of all, as far as competition is concerned, I genuinely believe every individual has a place in this world in the field that they work. Number one, I don't particularly look upon uh, my co-workers, uh, my colleagues, my actors who I work with as competition. As far as being a professional is concerned, my brief is to uh, be on time, do my job in the most astute manner possible. Uh, if I'm required to be uh, on the set at nine o'clock, be there at five to nine. If I'm proposed to pack up at 10 in the night, then I should be there till 10, 15, 10, 30. Giving those allowances. Uh, that's what I believe uh, my, uh, you know, uh, job descriptions and i think the competition will sort itself out you've done 140 films do you still get nervous going in front of a camera i haven't counted but i'll take your word for it uh do i get nervous going in front of the camera today yes extremely i still get nervous um there was a time when in the beginning of my career let's say in the nascent stages of my career, where I just had to get the job done, you know, reach from point A in the dialogue to point Z in the dialogue. Uh, now, what happens is you start understanding the craft uh, and you start viewing yourself as an actor through the eyes of the camera, which is your audience. And then you have to start viewing it in totality, in the whole uh, scenario of the screenplay, and that scenario, the only one person who has that in their mind is your director. So you need to get into the head of the director. So you're actually in two places at the same time. One is the head of the director in terms of what he expects from you. And the other is the head of your character. So yeah, I'm extremely nervous. I'm more nervous today, probably because I understand the implications of a bad performance. And I'm probably more critical of myself today as an actor than I was uh, X number of years ago. And I think I get more and more nervous every time I face the camera. But suddenly, it, it, you know, when you go back, you know, dub a film, uh, put your sound over your picture, you realize that there are so many things you could have done which are much better because not only have you grown as a human being, you've also grown as an actor. So yeah, so that nervousness is extreme. Very uncomfortable kind of nervousness. It's almost like stage fright. What difference do you find between the Hindi and the South film industry? Well, you know, uh, it's difficult for me to comment today uh, on the Hindi and the South film industry. Uh, I, I haven't worked in the South film industry for a very, very long time. Uh, I, I think it was in the 90s that I did most of my work with South uh, production companies making Hindi films. Um, the difference I could refer to at that time is that they were extremely disciplined. Seven o'clock call time meant seven o'clock call time and you know, one o'clock uh, tiffin break, as they called it at that time, was one o'clock. Everything would come to a standstill at one o'clock and it would start again at two o'clock, no matter what. I saw superstars like Rajnikanji, who I have done a film with, uh, were actually on the set by 6.30 in the morning. It is not the case today from the film industry that I work in today, which is the Hindi film industry. Where now I find that the Hindi film industry is as disciplined. You know? But at that time, the difference which I found with Hindi and South was just this, that they valued time. And I think time means money, and time means budgets. And if you can make your film come in under budget, then you have that much more of a profit margin, which then gives you the possibility of making another film. And as an actor, if you're going to contribute to a, a green budget, then your producer might sign you again. But if you're the cause of uh, a red budget, then you won't get cost. <laughs> so yeah. The health of the industry, any industry, depends on budget. You, know, you need to get your returns. How was your experience working with Mr. Amitabh Bachchan in the movie A Krishna? Okay. How did I feel when I shot with Amitji the first time? Look, I've been a huge fan of his. I mean, as we all have, grown up on his films, and the works, everything. So there was this sequence where um, you know, I had to approach Amitji uh, and the character that Amitji was playing was this uh, huge industrialist. And I am supposed to be uh, an MBA out of college. And he's supposed to be my guiding light. And I have to attend this lecture 
paper which he's giving. And uh, uh, I, I went and said my lines and the shot went off okay. Now, what was my reaction to the shot going off? Okay? I must tell you another incident that happened because these are these are these are gems of incidences with people like Amaji. It's, it's amazing. After this shot happened, and the director said, "Okay," I went shouting through the audit auditorium with all the junior artists. Bene, Amitabh Bachchan ke shot shot kiya na. Bene, Amitabh Bachchan ke shot shot kiya. You know, it was that it was that exhilaration of having been in that same block with. That actor who you have actually watched on the big screen, you know, in 70 mm, Sholay and stuff like that, and actually uh, sharing sp screen space with with Amiji, it was uh, exhilarating. What is the first thing you do to research and approach a role? Uh, there are two things. One is the physicality of the character that is required of the character, so that the character looks. What he is supposed to do. Um, I kind of cut out what is not necessary. Um, it's it's not what what all I can put in, but rather cut out what is not okay. It's it's a way of approaching it. This I got from my dad when he told me in a photograph, uh, remove what is not required so that the subject is enhanced. So that's the one thing, physicality. And the the, the second thing is. Uh, um, his disposition, the character's disposition, vis-a-vis -vis his motivation. That motivation comes from the screenplay and the story. So, yeah, it's a combination of these two things. And then, of course, the director's vision, which, which kind of covers everything. Yeah. You did four films in Rajshri Productions. Which was your favorite film and why? Ah, difficult question. Yeah, which is my favorite of any of my films is difficult, let alone all the films with Suraji. Uh, you know, every film that I've done with them has been a favorite while I was doing it. When I look back on each film or sometimes when it comes on television and I look at it, there are a lot of memories that are attached to those films and a lot of successes and a lot of uh, uh, which are attached to it and a lot of careers and a lot of things that happened in life because of those films. I still believe that I'm uh, relevant today because of those four films amongst others, but primarily those four films. So very difficult for me to... Uh, you know, uh, uh, home in on one single film of the Rajshri's. In fact, if you would ask me uh, as a comparative, uh, a film which hasn't done so well uh, as against a film of Suraji's, which has done well, and said, which do you think is better? Very difficult for me to say that that one is better or this one is better because for me, it was 100% in every film, in every shot. That's the way I approached. Because, you know, you know, uh, each film, when it was offered to me, gave me... Uh, uh, a step higher in terms of my positioning as an actor. Many PR kia brought me back into the industry as a negative. Hamab ke hain brought me into the parallel lead. Ham saath saath hain brought me into another parallel. You know, so uh, every time it was something more happened. Yeah, so difficult to say. A producer or a director you had the most fun working with. I would say Suraji, David Dhawan, uh, Mahesh Manjrekar, Ram Gopal Verma. Uh, I hope I haven't left anybody out, but uh, Nitma Mohan, Pehlaj Nihala, you know, a lot of the 90s, because I've worked a lot with them. Ashutosh recently. Uh, for a sheer, uh, Ashutosh, for a sheer research, I mean, when you make a historical, it's, it's, it's a tough call. And his attention to detail. And he himself is a phenomenal actor, Ashutosh. So he would enact the scenes and I kind of imbibe his uh, persona, you know, to do it. Yeah, so a lot of, lot of people. Rate these actors you worked with. Salman, Shahrukh, Amel, <laughs> Akshay, Ritik, and Ajay. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. I, I think this would be... Shoti uh, badi baat. Is that the correct phrase? I don't know. But you know... Uh, no, I'm not in a position to rate. Forget about the actors you've mentioned. They are phenomenal. I'm not in a position to rate anybody else. I don't sit in judgment of anybody else. But one thing I will say, is every actor that you have named so far has a certain amount of brilliance on screen. And that is, I don't see anybody else having that similar brilliance. They, they bring to the screen something unique. 
something star-like and a passion. So no, that would be very unfair uh, for me to even consider rating them because then that puts me in a position of uh, being a critique, which I don't think I'm uh, entitled. Besides, I'm very fond of all of them. <laughs> I think they're great guys. <laughs> Do you prefer playing a positive or negative character on screen? Positive, negative, but it is the contribution of the character which is uh, important. How important is the character to the screenplay? Can the screenplay function without that character? If it cannot, uh, then no, I would rather not. And if it needs that character, then how much weightage does that character have? Uh, for instance, there's no point being uh, a character on whom a murder mystery is based when you're playing the character that got murdered in the first scene. It's as simple as that. So that's the, the film cannot move forward without that character, but there has to be weighted. So you kind of balance out between the two. Uh, it's more difficult when you're playing character roles, which I'm doing, because you really need to find that that USP of that character and whether it's commercially viable and that it should not hurt you commercially as an actor and you should not get stereotyped and stuck in doing, uh, for the want of another word, let me call it special appearances or bit roles. You know, so you need to keep your quote-unquote uh, importance not only in the eyes of the industry but also in the eyes of the audience so that when the audience sees you on screen, they expect something from you. You know, so yeah, it's it's a little bit more difficult uh, as a character actor because you get offered a lot. As a, as a lead actor, you don't get offered uh, substandard. The, the, the film is made about the lead actors. And, and so... Uh, the responsibility is so much more on the lead actors. You know, so yeah, it's a tough job for those guys. If the film runs, we all get the credit. If the film doesn't run, it's my heroes who take the blame. <laughs> Your favorite fight scene? I love you, the biggest or any other film, and why? Um, one of my favorite fight scenes was actually not in any of the films that you've mentioned. It was in a film called Yudhpat, where <laughs> which didn't run. But I was playing a, a, a villain who was scared. He was not your quintessential uh, uh, Mogambo. He was not Amjad, Amjad Khan of Shole, Amjad Bhai of Shole. He was, he was scared. And it is his fear that would generate these acts of violence against other people. And so in the climax sequence, when he finally uh, you know, finds his feet and he's still trying to fight with the hero, he happens with a machine gun in his hand. And when he fires it off, he realizes the power that this machine gun has. And then there's a change within the climax in his whole disposition in terms of he is powerful. I like that, you know, the, the emotional content, the psyche of the man being projected through the fight sequence. So I like that as an actor because I thought there was a story of the individual's uh, psychology that was being portrayed in that fight sequence. Yeah. Your favorite actor or actress and why? My mother, definitely. She kind of spanned the log. You know, uh, Madhubala ji. In, in recent times, Tabu. Yeah. Uh, Vahida Aunty. In the gentleman, obviously, Amitji. Now, I, I, now I speak this as an, as an audience. I, I, I stake no claim to being an actor when I say this. I say this as an audience. Uh, uh, Amitji, obviously. Dilip Kumar Sahab. Sunil Datanku, uh, Shah Rukh, Salman, uh, they have this quality, which I as an audience like to watch on screen. Uh, You've done many roles with various top actors. Which was your favorite role? I've done a variety of roles and I've been lucky that uh, I've got that variety of roles to do, right? You know, from the absolute negative to the positive to in between to comedy and stuff like that so and going back a little bit there would be uh something like comedy and uh, uh i forget the name of the film uh, kahi, uh, kahi, kahi pyar na ho 
see this is what happens you get older you lose your memory uh so at that point in time because it was something different and i was not getting jaded going to the same kind of character and doing the same thing every day it was it was very fresh for me did you really go ball playing a maratha in panipat can you share the experience oh yeah oh yeah i really went ball uh, ashu told me that we need this for you and i said sure and he says what about your other films i said i have no other films and i won't do any other films and what did i feel i felt liberated i was wanting to see my hair now it's, it's kind of short i've used pani uh, <laughs> pat as an excuse to go for a crew cut i've always wanted my hair to remain short i couldn't do it because of continuity of various films and then there was this break uh, about a couple of years uh, in uh, around 2013 14 when i when i wasn't getting work and or work which wasn't i thought wasn't advisable for me to take on uh, for that same positioning reason and then panipat came along so i said fine let, let me go ball so there was about a period of about say 8 months or 9 months where i had to go ball so yeah we went into the studio uh, into ashu's office where they segregated the area uh, they shaved it off and i was thrilled to bits <laughs> a dream role that you still wish to do there isn't any dream role as such now they were at that time you know dream roles of um, maybe the larger than life hero and, you know that sort of thing or or the larger than life villain for instance but yeah now it's more uh, about getting that uh, that position in the script in the screenplay as an actor to perform a character and what's most important is that reaching the audience with and the audience reverts with uh, we liked you that's the greatest uh, you know uh, reward award you can get How do you feel about your daughter entering the film industry? <laughs> uh, you know, it, it was uh, like any other dad because uh, my experience, just as anybody else's in this business, has been one of uh, uh, having to deal with great amounts of insecurity, uh, especially as I told you way back. And then the insecurity kind of continues because you never know where you're going to be positioned in terms of your source of income. that's one and secondly all your failures and successes and there are fewer successes compared to failures are public you know so you're kind of out there laying it out and your your life is or your commercial life your professional life is an open book so i was kind of concerned as any parent would be in terms of how she would be able to deal with that aspect you know she studied law and she's worked as an advocate and she's got her son as an advocate so so she did 5 years of that and then she she kind of came up to me one day and said i want to be an actor and wo kehte hai na ki pairo tale zameen khasakbe that's exactly what happened like just today she was telling me as to the expression that you came up and you said that and my uh, point of view was that you got to do what you got to do but i asked her this question i said look where do you want to be when you're 40 years old do you want to be at the top of your game which you would be in another profession luck permitting of course or do you want to be um, struggling and i gave her my example and i said even today after 40 years in the business and after so many films etc etc uh, i still don't have that confidence in terms of a source of income i cannot be dependent on my acting career as my source of income so having said that she said to me at that time she said i would not like to look back when i'm 40 and have not have felt that i should have given it a try and i think that closed it for me what is the difference between film tv and ott platforms let's take it sequentially in terms of a timeline cinema television and ott that's how it came You see the thing is uh, cinema has has been evolved just like everything else in this world I feel that uh, we are producing content which is more varied in as much as that we are still producing films like the superhero over the top jumping three floors fighting 10 villains etc um today as we were producing way back in the 70s 80s 90s years so and we've also started producing and making films which are more content so called content driven which would have at in those days been referred to as art sin for some reason beyond my understanding but those films are also doing well which have but they are being presented with certain amount of uh, entertainment 
not like a documentary. So yes, cinema, I feel, has broadened in its scope of uh, content that is being put forward, and there's an audience for it. As far as television is concerned, you see, interestingly, when television first came onto the scene, private television, or even Doordarshan and then private television, you had some remarkable uh, shows that were coming on. If I can remember correctly, uh, Koshe Sheikh Asha, Asha Saas, um, Buniyad, you know, since you've asked me this question uh, offhand, it's, uh, I can't remember all of them. But then those were in the days when you made your full project, like you would make a film, correct it, do everything to it, and then put it out. This went on until we did uh, weekly shows on television, where you, the creative, uh, the creators had enough time to write, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and put out their content. And then television came into the daily format. And I personally feel that while it might be commercially more viable for television channels to go into daily format, because they're not putting up that many more shows to cover their airtime, but I genuinely believe that in terms of creative content, there's just that much that you can churn out on a per day basis. And I feel that's where the failing takes place. Uh, for me, personally, as an actor, is I was good with television as long as it was weekly. But when it became daily, I felt that we kind of started compromising on the quality of what we could put out there as creators and had to settle for uh, filling that 22 minutes of airtime. I personally have no uh, grudge about it. That's the system. We have to work within that system and one should accept. It. It's as simple as that. And there are actors and producers who are doing a great job within that system. I just feel that it would be a lot better if we could shift to the weekly format, but I think commercial constraints don't permit that. Having said that, coming to OTT. OTT is a different ball game altogether. It's a mix of the two. It's a mix of feature film over the years, having evolved into content different feature films and television, which is spread over X number of episodes, combined into one and put into uh, the OTT platform and shot with the kind of uh, detailing that is required of a feature film. So in a way, OTT would be, in terms of for a maker who was wanting to put out a long story, the, the ideal, you know, to put out their content. That's my take on it. Yeah. For many more exclusive videos, don't forget to subscribe to Major Mood Entertainment.